thank you very much. Abare Saleo, good afternoon. President Ruto, governors, distinguished guests, the best sentence in the English language. All protocols observed. It is a pleasure to be in El Dorot at this devolution conference, my first. And I'm delighted to have this opportunity to speak to you today. Yushiri Kano wa Kenya na Marekane ni Imara. Umajengwa kwa miyaka sitini ya madile na maslahi ya pamoje. Our partnership has enhanced security and improved the lives of Kenyans and Americans. Since I arrived in Kenya, my team and I have been focused on strengthening the U.S.-Kenya trade investment relationship in coordination with the Kenyan government. The presentation that you are about to hear is one that I have given many times over the past several months to encourage businesses to invest in Africa and Kenya. I want you to hear the pitch, too, and hope that you use the data for your own pitches. And I welcome you to add your county to this story. And the story is, why Africa, why Kenya, and why your county? Whether that's Homa Bay, or Kalife, or Mon Nairobi, or Mombasa. Let us seize this moment to increase bilateral trade and investment to all our citizens. Now, just after I arrived, it became clear to me we needed to update the narrative on Africa. For example, when I was a CEO, I'll be honest, I probably thought about Africa 1% of the time. Many businesses I managed were elsewhere. But if I were back in the boardroom today, Africa would be on my radar for two very simple reasons. Supply chain diversification and net zero emissions. If the war in Ukraine and the COVID pandemic taught us anything from a business perspective, it taught us that single sourcing your supply chain from any one country is not smart. Single sourcing is a, is a recipe for supply chain disruption and shortage. Today, every company is looking for new places to diversify their supply chain. Now, what the war in Ukraine and the pandemic did to spur supply chain diversification, climate change has done for energy use. Businesses are pushing for net zero emissions to meet their climate change mitigation goals. And Kenya, as you know, generates 93% of its electricity from renewable sources, and this percentage is only going to go up with geothermal, solar, and wind investments. And to further emphasize this point, ponder these words from a CEO of a major consumer tech company who I hope to bring to Kenya. He said, supply chain diversification is now an essential element of our business, and so is the need to be totally green. In that sense, Kenya seems to offer us a one-two punch for success. Now, at the embassy, we've been doing a lot of trade and investment data analysis since my arrival. And what I have learned has been surprising and paints a far more dynamic business outlook for Africa than most Americans understand. And here are some data points that I found particularly interesting and ones that I share often with American businesses. Why Africa is the first question American businesses have. By 2015, one in four humans, a quarter of the world's population, will live on the African continent. And one third of the working age people will live on the African continent. It's the youngest population on, on the world, 60% of the population is under 25. And in my view, Africa is the last and largest emerging market and offers the last big, big supply chain and consumer prospects, much like the opportunities we saw in Southeast Asia 20 years ago. 
Now that's how I'm talking about Africa to US businesses. Let's zoom in on how I'm talking about why Kenya should be everyone's destination in Africa. Kenya is the most stable democracy in Africa. Kenya is the gateway to the East African market of almost 500 million consumers. Kenya is the regional logistics hub. Kenya is the leading regional financial hub. And Kenya, with its silicon savanna and super smart engineers, is the reason, region's ICT hub. Kenya is a leading destination for foreign direct investment and venture capital. And Kenya has a young, educated, entrepreneurial, and English-speaking workforce. Kenya generates, as I said, over 93% of its energy from renewable sources. And Kenya's largest export market is the United States. Let me repeat, Kenya's largest export uh, is the United States, and we feel Kenya is ready for liftoff as it diversifies. Let me unpack a couple of these areas. Democracy. I arrived in Kenya days before the August 22 general elections. What I witnessed was nothing short of remarkable. Kenya held what many analysts and commentators say was the freest, fairest, and most credible election in Kenyan history. The elections were observed by international and local election organizations, and the results were upheld by the Kenyan Supreme Court, and power was transferred orderly and peacefully at the time. Now, gateway to East Africa. As I said, Kenya is the gateway to East Africa. 80% of East African regional trade passes through Kenya's Mombasa port. In addition, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in Nairobi is the busiest airport in East Africa, served by 40 passenger airlines and 25 cargo carriers, including FedEx and DHL. Kenya also has some excellent infrastructure, such as the Standard Gauge Railway, a series of new roads, and modern ports. From a financial and technology hub perspective, Kenya is already the regional financial hub for East Africa. Several international banks have been present in Nairobi for decades, and five, main, five major global financial institutions, like the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, have established their regional headquarters in Nairobi. The region's regional stock market sits in Nairobi, and the city hosts the necessary legal, accounting, and consultancy services to preserve and accelerate this There we go. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Nairobi also has a very vibrant technology community known as Silicon Savannah. And the Kenyan government is committed to establishing Kenya as the premier destination for tech sector investment and innovation in Africa. Many leading US companies are already in Kenya, including the names that you see on the screen. Emerging, but also hugely impactful. Oh having a little trouble there. <laughs> Emerging, but also hugely impactful Kenyan tech companies like Copia Global, Semiconductor Limited, Twiga Foods, Market Force, Power Financial Wellness, and others are here in Kenya. I've met these companies, I've visited their operations, and what I see happening here has many of the critical components that make Silicon Savannah an even bigger success. Now, at the nexus of finance and technology sits one of the most impressive companies I have ever seen, M-Pesa. M-Pesa has annual revenues of over a billion US dollars, $360 billion of, G of gross market value flowed through the platform last year. And it has an open API of over 60,000 developers. And PESA has over 50 million customers in seven countries and is involved in over 70% of Kenyan transactions. 
powers over 5 million businesses, and 60% of Kenya's annual GDP flows through it. Let me say that again. 60% of Kenya's GDP flows through M-Pesa. And let me tell you, I know a little something about this industry, having bought and owned PayPal at eBay. And I assure you, M-Pesa is extraordinary. And PESA alone demonstrates the brilliant business minds at work in Kenya devising African solutions to global problems. Foreign direct investment and venture capital, Kenya has attracted significant foreign direct investment and is a leading destination for venture capital. Interestingly, when venture capital flows decreased 35% globally last year, total funding in Africa actually increased 8%. Even more impressive, while venture capital to Nigeria was down 36% and essentially flat in South Africa, funding to Kenya increased by 33%. You go, Kenya. Adjusted for GDP, Kenya receives significantly more venture capital than anywhere else on the continent, generating roughly triple the venture capital to GDP ratios of Nigeria, Egypt, and South Africa. Unlike its continental competitors who attract predominantly fintech-led investments, Kenya venture capital flows are more diverse, led by e-commerce and clean tech, followed by fintech, agritech, and enterprise investments. And what's even more unique for Kenya? In 2022, Kenyan women-founded startups raised $146 million in equity, more than any other country on the entire continent. As I said, more than 90% of Kenya's on-grid electricity is currently generated from renewable sources, primarily geothermal, wind, and solar. A great example is Capeto in Kajiado County. It's the second largest wind farm in Kenya, proudly supported by the U.S. International Development Finance Corp. and Power Africa. And it is phenomenal that Kenya has committed to reaching 100% renewable energy by 2030 and is already close to achieving that goal. From a workforce perspective, Kenya is English speaking, has high literacy rates, and strong primary, secondary, and tertiary education systems. And every firm that I have spoken to about the quality of Kenyan workforce says this, Kenya, the Kenyan workforce is their best workforce in the world. As I mentioned, in 2022, the United States became Kenya's largest export market, edging ahead of neighboring Uganda. In total, Kenya exported $890 million in goods to the United States last year. And in addition, the United States exported around $600 million in goods to Kenya. So $1.5 billion in total US-Kenya trade, it's fairly balanced and is expected to increase as the United States and Kenya negotiate a first of its kind bilateral trade agreement that we hope will be done by the end of this year. And we hope this agreement will be a model for the rest of the continent once signed. So now you know why I am so enthusiastic about the Kenyan prospects and the Kenyan investment climate. But when I talk to American investors, they have some questions. And there are room for improvement. The Ruto administration has made great strides and is committed to building a business-friendly environment. But if it is to accomplish the goal, the government's going to have to address a few issues. And the first is taxes. Kenya must have a consistent, transparent, and fairly administered national tax policy to attract and retain foreign direct investment and accelerate economic development. The tax rates don't need to be the lowest. They need to be the most consistent. And all of you know, some work still needs to be done, but the recent finance bill had many changes that will make ta Kenya's tax policy more consistent and therefore more bankable by foreign direct investment. Without a doubt, corruption is a critical issue and one that must be addressed for Kenya to reach its full potential in all areas of development. 
Everyone knows corruption leads to misuse of public resources, slows economic growth and job creation, and damages the investment climate, as well as undermining equal participation in the prosperity of this country. However, while corruption does remain a challenge in Kenya, as in other developing markets, third-party measures of corruption indicate positive trends and some progress in recent years. According to the United States Millennium Challenge Corporation's country scorecard for 2023, Kenya's score for control of corruption was 0.28, representing its third passing score in a row and its highest score to date. But to put this number in perspective, Kenya's 0.28 was superior to India's 0.18 and Vietnam's 0.19. And what I can tell you is Americans don't give it a second thought to invest in India. In addition, President Ruto has cracked down on corruption, calling out government agencies that engage in unscrupulous practices and firing government officials involved. Now, I also get a lot of questions about Kenya's debt. Kenya, like many developing countries, is burdened with high debt, limiting its ability to fund public services and infrastructure in line with its ambitions. According to the IMF, Kenya's jet to GDP ratio is 69%, but this number is not an outlier amongst regional averages. For comparison, Malaysia's debt to GDP stood at 69% in 2021, while India's ratio was 83% in 2022. Another area I get a ton of questions on is cargo clearance. Now, despite improving logistics, the delivered cost of a container to Kenya remains significantly higher than the container shipments landing from Europe, landing in Europe or Asia. So there is room for improvement on cost, but here's a great fact. Back in 2010, it took over 11 days to clear a container at the port of Mombasa. Today, it takes 3.5 days. And this reduction has um, occurred despite cargo increasing over the past five years from 27 million metric tons in 2016 to nearly 35 million metric tons in 2021. So that's, this is an important thing for Americans. This is an excellent opportunity, I think, to put to rest the argument that Kenya is not a manufacturing country. True, Kenya has room to grow in this sector, but manufacturing is happening here. And let me give you a few examples of Kenya's manufacturing prowess. Gearbox in Nairobi County, a high mix, low flow electronics manufacturer, runs a state of the art, what we call a surface mount assembly line. And in November of 2022, began manufacturing Raspberry Pi's Pico product for the African market. Gearbox's production quality Catch this, meets or exceeds that of Raspberry Pi's other production sites in Wales and Japan, producing a first pass yield of 99.6%. Semiconductor Technologies, a US owned semiconductor manufacturing and nanotechnology company in Nyeri County, is growing rapidly and has hired more than 80 Kenyan engineers in the last 12 months. Kenya's Revital Healthcare in Kalifi County is one of the largest manufacturers of medical products in Africa, producing 48 devices and exporting to 28 countries. Isuzu has operated an East Africa assembly plant in Nairobi since 1977, selling more than 90,000 units with more than 15 models. And there is also a robust and growing e-mobility manufacturing assembly industry in Kenya. Kenya is the future for Africa's two and three wheel e-vehicles and e-buses. And lastly, when we talk about trade, we have to talk about apparel and apparel manufacturing. Last year, Kenya recorded its highest ever apparel exports to the United States, over $540 million, employing nearly 200,000 Kenyans, mostly young women. Leading U.S. apparel brands sourcing from Kenya, sourcing from Kenya include PBH, which includes Tommy Hilfiger and Calvin Klein, Contour, which includes Lee and Wrangler, and several more, including Walmart and Levi's. And what we hear from these brands, they want more Kenya apparel manufacturing, both because of the high quality of labor and Kenya's leadership in renewable energy. Brands are steadily moving production operations to Kenya, from Sri Lanka, 
Bangladesh, Ethiopia, and China because of what you have to offer. And more of this is on the way. I think apparel manufacturing may be the biggest near-term employment opportunity in all of Kenya. So clearly, there is something happening here. It's abundantly clear to me, and every day I try to make abundantly clear to the international audience that Kenya is open for business. Over the past year, the Kenyan government has been implementing real measures to improve economic conditions and create a business-friendly investment climate throughout the country. Following months of deliberation and consultations with the political and the business community, President Ruto announced the following reforms at the March American Chamber of Commerce Business Summit. A, a consistent, fair, predictable, and enduring tax regime. Alignment of Kenya's data protection regulations with the multilateral global cross-border private rules framework. A six-month deadline for KRA to either pay all verified tax refund claims or provide offsets. Elimination of the VAT on export services. Elimination of the domestic equity requirement for ICT companies. Removal of tax on stock-based compensation for employees of all startups. And commitment to adhere to the OECD two-pillar solution framework for digital services tax. And finally, a commitment to revitalize Kenya's special economic zones to maximize their competitiveness, and more reforms are in the pipeline. As you can see, there is so much opportunity in Kenya, and an opportunity to bring the U.S. and U.S. Kenyan businesses closer together. All of what I'm about to announce has happened in the last 12 months. In agriculture, Del Monte, the largest private sector employee in Kenya has invested $5.5 million in a new state-of-the-art fresh fruit packing facility in Kiambu County. Kentegra, a U.S.-Kenya company on the forefront of restoring Kenya as the leading producer of organic insecticide, is building a new $15 million pyrethium refinery in Nakuru County, benefiting over 90,000 farmers. Regen Organics, an incredibly innovative company found by young MIT graduates, they're like 27, <laughs> turning waste into fertilizer, fuel, and animal feed. They will expand their farm and organic waste collection, more than doubling their production of affordable, locally produced agriculture inputs, benefiting 10,000 farmers. And they're building a new $7 million factory that will create 500 jobs in Kakamega County. In apparel, the industry that continues year-on-year -year expansion, new partnerships have been launched with several leading manufacturing companies, including MAS and Mega, Coast Apparel, and UAL. And they will create at least 20,000 additional jobs and increase exports by 200 million in the, last year, in the next year. Many of these investments are in Machacos County. Best Corporation, also in Machacos, will launch a new apparel manufacturing facility in mid-2023 with plans to hire 2,400 new employees. And NextGen will build a state-of-the-art apparel labeling and packaging facility that has already broken ground and will be operational in September. In ICT and innovation, CCI Global, the largest business process outsourcing in Kenya, company in Kenya, has doubled its workforce to 8,000. In the next six months, they'll add 4,000 jobs in Kenya, in Kiambu County, for American clients like United Airlines, Spirit Airlines, JetBlue, AT&T, and Shipt. In energy, Malele Energy, a U.S. company, just concluded a deal to acquire part of the Turkana Wind Power Project, one of the largest in Africa, and producer over 20% of Kenya's electricity in 2022, with huge plans for expansion. And last but certainly not least, in the medical pharma industry, the government of Kenya and Moderna finalized an agreement to build a new $500 million vaccine manufacturing facility in Kiambu County. This will be the only such facility on the African continent for Moderna and their first factory outside the United States. Moderna's investment should be a catalyst for the medical industry in Africa, producing over 500 million vaccines a year. All of this has happened in the last 12 months. So all you need to do, Mr. President, is do that again in the next 12 months. And there are more exciting developments happening every day. American sports associations like 
the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, and the entertainment icon, the Grammys, are all currently looking for a home in Kenya. And the television and movie industries are discovering Kenya too. Everyone thinks Nigeria has the market on this, but just look at the fact that Kenya now has a real housewives of Nairobi. <laughs> so, there are many reasons why global businesses are considering or should consider Africa, and specifically Kenya, and your counties for trade and investment opportunity. This is your opportunity. What are your priorities? What is your sales pitch? And as I said at the beginning of this presentation, when I was the CEO of HP, I only thought of doing business in Africa about 1% of the time. American companies are used to doing business with Europe and Asia. How will you convince them to make doing, in business, doing business in Kenya just as routine? I encourage you to take this presentation. There's no trademark on this presentation. Take this presentation and tell the story of why Africa, why Kenya, and why your county. Why Garissa? Why Mombasa? Why Isiola? Why Nakuru? Why uh, any, any county in the country? You should be able to answer the question, why Africa, why Kenny, Kenya, and why your county? So to conclude, the United States and Kenya are open for business. And to quote President Ruto, Kenya means business. So we have work to do. We need to roll up our sleeves and deliver the results. The American people and your constituents deserve our best efforts to expand shared economic opportunity and growth. Asante sana.